In this video, we will talk about the second method of passive transport, that is diffusion. Let us first understand the definition of diffusion. It is the movement of solute particles. Movement of solute particles. And these solute particles, they can be solid, liquid or gaseous. They can be in any state. So it is movement of solute particle from its higher concentration to its lower concentration till it reaches equilibrium. Till it reaches equilibrium. Now here there are two important things which we have to remember or rather three. Number one here it is solute particle which is moving. In osmosis it was solvent particle which is moving. Second here there is no uh, essentiality or no requirement of a semi permeable membrane and three this is also passive and that is why the movement of particle will take place till in both the compartments or in all areas it is in equilibrium. So solute particles are moving, semi permeable membrane not essential for this process to take place and because it is a, pro a passive process it will also take place till equilibrium is attained. Now, let us take these solu solute particles and see what is moving. That means if the solute particle is solid, solid solute particle. We can take the example of smoke. Whenever we see smoke, there are some black particles. These are unburned or incompletely burned particles. We can call them unburned carbon. So this is solute is solid and it is moving in gas that is in air. So solute particle we can think of smoke as an example. Let us talk about liquid solute particle. When we squeeze a lemon there are few drops of lemon juice which fall into water. Lemon juice is liquid, it is solute and it is going into water which is solvent. So if we are talking of liquid solute, we can think of lime juice. And gaseous, gaseous solute. When we think of gaseous solute, it is gas moving into something. If we are, uh, we can take the example of carbonated drinks. In carbonated drinks, there is carbon dioxide which is dissolved into that liquid. As soon as we open the lid or the cap of the bottle, this gas fizzes out. So this gas was in liquid. So here we can write the example as carbonated drinks. In this a gas as a solute, we can also uh, take an example that oxygen is dissolved in water and this is the oxygen which the aquatic organisms are able to take. So the solute can be solid, liquid or gaseous. So solute particle is going to move. We'll take some common examples which we encounter every now and then. When we spray a deodorant or a perfume on our body and we walk into a room, suddenly the people sitting there, they start smelling it because the concentration of that perfume was maximum on our body, on our clothes and in the room the concentration was zero. So from higher concentration the particles start to move into the room everywhere. And till everywhere the particles are evenly distributed, this movement is going to take place. Another example is if we have an incense stick, then the fragrance of that incense stick spreads from one point to the entire area. It could be the room, it could be the entire house. Now there are certain factors which affect the rate of diffusion. So let us talk of those factors affecting 
the rate of diffusion. The first factor is temperature. Higher the temperature, faster is the rate of diffusion. Higher the temperature, faster is the rate of diffusion. Now let us take an example to understand this point. We are able to smell hot food. When the food is being cooked in the kitchen, we are able to smell it in our rooms. How is this possible? When the food is being cooked, we are supplying heat energy. And we know heat or any energy can be converted from one form to another form. So heat energy gets transformed into kinetic energy. And the particles which are moving out of that food, they are at a higher energy level. More kinetic energy, that means they will be able to move to a greater distance. And that is why we are able to smell it from a distance, that is from our room. If the same food is kept in a refrigerator and we take it out, we don't smell it. The reason is the particles are still there. But right now, we are not providing it any heat. So, the heat energy which is not getting provided, so heat is not converted into kinetic energy. So particles remain there on the food itself. So when we increase the temperature, what is happening is heat energy is getting converted into kinetic energy. And that is why the particles are able to move faster or they are able to cover a greater distance. So we say higher the temperature, faster is the rate of diffusion. The second factor, which is again very important, is density of the medium. Density of the medium. And this was explained by Graham. And this is known as Graham's law. This law says that rate of diffusion, which is represented by capital D, is inversely proportional to the square root of the density of the medium. So here capital D is the rate of diffusion and small d or lowercase d is the density of the medium. That means if the medium is dense, the rate of diffusion is going to be slower. We can think of three mediums, gaseous medium, liquid medium and solid medium. And we have also studied that in these three states of matter, in gas, the particles are very away, far, far from each other. In liquids, they are slightly closer and in solids, they are sort of compactly arranged. So if medium is dense, how are the particles going to go through that medium? So dense medium means solid. In solid, diffusion is negligible. Then it is in liquid. And gaseous medium, diffusion is the fastest. So less dense the medium is, faster is the rate of diffusion. This is the second factor which affects the rate of diffusion and that is density of the medium. Third factor is distance. Just now, when we were talking about temperature as a factor, we took the example that when the cook or the food is being cooked in the kitchen, we are able to smell it because the particles are able to cover a specific distance. Our uh, neighbors or maybe, you know, people staying a little far from us, if they are cooking, we don't smell the food that they are cooking because the particles will move. So person sitting in their house will be able to smell it. But we are not going to smell it because we are at a distance from that. So particles, they don't travel very, very far. So more the distance, less is going to be the diffusion. So more distance, less is the rate of diffusion. So when we talk of the factors, temperature is very important, density of the medium is very important and distance is also important. 
Another factor which affects the rate of diffusion is the gradient. So fourth is concentration gradient. Concentration gradient means one end has millions of particles, other end has maybe nothing. So from very high to low, suddenly the movement will take place. But if there are two areas where one area has say 60 molecules and the other area has 40 molecules. So the movement is going to be slower. Diffusion will take place. But how is concentration gradient going to affect? Higher the gradient, faster is the rate of diffusion. Higher the gradient, faster will be the diffusion. And uh, the example of this could be like if we spray too much of perfume on our body, then suddenly as soon as we enter the room, everybody starts smelling it. Because here the concentration is very, very, very high. And in the room, there is no perfume particle. So from very high to low. This can be understood by a simple example. Gradient is actually a slope, a uh, higher to a lower distance or concentration difference. So if we have a ramp like this and we start rolling a ball from here, as soon as we leave the ball, the ball suddenly goes down fast because the slope is more or the gradient is more. Now if you change the gradient like this, if you keep changing the slope, the ball is still going to roll but at a slower pace. And when it becomes like this, you keep the ball here, it's going to stay here because it is now a plane. So there's no gradient. So higher the gap, faster it is going to move. So these are four important factors which affect the rate of diffusion. And it is a passive process. It will always take place till equilibrium is reached. And in this process, we do not need the membrane. So even if this membrane is not there, this process is still going to take place. After this, in the next part, we will talk about the applications of diffusion. We have discussed few here and the other process that is facilitated diffusion.